Welcome to the Impact Lounge. You are in the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Podcast. I'm your host, TW. And of course, we got the man with the plan, the one and only BQ. Say what's up to the people. Yes, yeah, on a master plan. What's up, everyone? <laughs> Welcome to the, uh, the Cool Factor. If you're uh, checking us out here on YouTube, you do not see our faces. You only hear our voices. Uh, just having some camera issues today, so all good. We, we rock rock audio, all good. You know what I mean. But yeah, um, we apologize for depriving you of uh, our beauty for for one week. What are you gonna do with yourself? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I, I really I was due to shave my hair anyway, so <laughs> that way I can just uh, look like a mess and no one knows. So <laughs> yeah. Oh, there we go. There we go. But we will still, you know, um, I, I know you guys don't tune in just for our looks. You tune in for our hot takes, our sizzling hot takes, like hot cakes. OK, and that will still be delivered to you, served up on a platter for you to consume and enjoy while you're going through your work week, while you're at the gym, while you're driving to work. I don't know how you watch YouTube while you're driving to work, but whatever, however you do it. This is still going to be here for you. You're still going to enjoy this content that we're going to put down for your ass. All right. So before we get started, please do us a favor. Do us a great favor. Hit that like button so that everybody knows how much you like this video. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button so that you are subscribed to this channel um, and, you know, get the get the ratings up. Go ahead and hit the notification bell so you get notified each and every time we drop some brand new fire content on this page. And also, news alert, stop what you're doing right now. I am actually officially launching my YouTube page for my other podcast to talk about pod. Um, I'm going to talk mostly wrestling, but I'll probably talk some entertainment, probably talk some music, may talk some, some world issues, who knows, whatever it is. But go ahead, stop what you're doing right now. Open up a separate browser and go subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just search Talking About Pod, the T-A-L-K-I-N-B-O-U-T-P-O-D, and it should come up in your YouTube. And if you can't find it there, just go to the Talking About Pod uh, Twitter page, and the link is right there in my bio. Go ahead and click that. Subscribe to the channel. Help your boy get my followers up real quick. Get my subscribers up real quick. So I could bring y'all, you know, I know y'all love the impact takes, but believe it or not, there's other things going on in the world. There's other wrestling companies and there's other types of entertainment. And I like to talk about all that stuff, but this here is the impact lounge. Okay. So right here, we talk about impact. We talk about impact stuff and BQ speaking of impact. What was there in the world of impact in the, the Twitter sphere, in the blogosphere, in the Facebook pages fear any news any any uh rumors and in your windows circulating that they caught your ears this week I feel like you're just making a bunch of words up but it's, yes it's yes I make works. words up a sphere yeah it sort of works um and and is just in relation to TW's YouTube channel check the pin comment of this video and uh, I'll make sure I have a direct link in there for you guys Boom. we can uh we can build that up kind of like we did with uh Lewis with his page so let's definitely do that folks but uh, I think what really caught my eye this week, and I, and I know some of you guys out there like to talk about every bit of impact news that funnels out of Len Asper's mouth or whatever. Like we're, we tend to kind of talk about the stuff that catches our eye, not just, just everything. So I think the only thing that stood out to me this week, um, the impact uh, admin on the YouTube, someone screenshotted this, it went all over that the next set of tapings, they're saying is going to be in uh, Fort Lauderdale. Very, very random. I, you would believe they know better than us, but I feel like this is a super random location. It's not somewhere that I've ever heard to be a wrestling hotbed necessarily. Yeah. But I know that when um, AEW was doing their Miami shows, uh, Cornette was saying, oh, in Miami, they cheer everything. And the reason they say that is like, because, you know, that's what around the time Cody Rhodes started getting booed, 
Uh, uh-huh. But he was he was in Buda, Miami, and Cornette's like, well, they they like everything there. They just you know. So I don't know. Maybe <laughs> it's speaking of Cody Rhodes. Sorry, sorry to interject. Speaking of Cody Rhodes, we're gonna talk about that shit. Ass- dynamite this week. Yeah, that. Oh, oh my god <laughs> uh by the way this is the opening segment for uh the talking about podcast this week just so you know if you guys want to hear me elaborate on this um but it was damn i i couldn't believe it i was floored i was taken aback i was aghast <laughs> i mean like <laughs> what the hell was that yo like what was that what and why you know There's what i mean some- there are so many people like, man, this was just a phenomenal match. This was amazing. That finish was amazing. I was like, that was horrible. But I think, I think, I think that's the AEW fan. The, the, yeah. the person that will just clap for spots for the sake of spots. You yeah, know what this, I mean? This is true. Because like, what else, what in the world even was that? Like, do Andrade and 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 Cody have some sort of blood feud where the where where you need to have a flaming table? What? what? <laughs> <laughs> Why did Brandy Rhodes run in the ring with a mask on? Yeah, so much what? Like what? I, what? I mean, it was dope, right? But like, but again, like this is the cool thing about wrestling, right? Like, if you have an idea that you want to do something dope. You start with that idea and you plan backwards. You're like, yo, when we go to Atlanta, I want to go through a flaming table. I know, I know, I'm tripping. I want to go through a flaming table. And and here's how we're going to do the flaming table. Uh, Brandy, I want you to come out of nowhere and light the table on fire while I'm setting the homie up. And you know what I mean? Because you can't sit somebody on the ropes and then light a table on fire and expect them to be sitting there the whole time. That's just completely unrealistic. So Brandy, I need you to come out of, out of the uh, audience with a mask on. You know, I mean, like, if that's what you wanted to do, fine. You could have done some stuff to set this up. You could have created some sort of stakes between Cody and Andrade where you, you know, where you felt like this needed to happen. I, I... I mean, I don't know what warrants a flaming table. You know, I, I don't know at what point of our relationship you feel like we need to go to flaming tables, but you could have, it's wrestling. You could have created something. There was nothing. Like, I mean, I think as much as people thought the spot was cool, you just couldn't stop asking, but why? Why? <laughs> right? Yeah. But, but why though? Like, that's the, the number one takeaway. So, and then, uh, uh, co- and I know it's an impact podcast, folks. We're just making fun of this segment. the The whole match, you could tell his back was already peeling. Yeah, and oh my like, God. I think he got some trash on it. And I and I'm thinking in my head, it looks like he got burnt in the the uh, sa- the uh, not the sauna, but the uh, tanning bed. Oh my God! <laughs> I was like, his skin is peeling off. You know what I mean? And you couldn't right. not look at it the whole match. And then that clearly. I, I can't wait to hear Jim Cornette's take on this shit. Like, clearly, they practiced the spot, or he was wearing something. So what? No, what that was, what it was, was. So I was thinking that, like, when they 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 started the brawl and they were like going into the crowd a little bit, and I and 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 I thought what happened. I thought maybe I looked away for a second, and maybe Cody fell into something, and that stuff was all over his back. But you know what it was? It was like a flame retardant uh like coating yeah 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 was, that's what i was saying a flame something flame retarding yeah right 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 it was something to help like you know c- to help him not not burn you know when he wanted to go through a flaming table because he's very smart um and uh, but i i don't know what was a more clever way to get that on you know what i mean i don't know maybe have the match with a shirt on i don't know i don't know <laughs> But it looked crazy. You couldn't not notice. You couldn't unsee the goop all over his back. <laughs> it's ridiculous. You got, you know, that's one, that is one thing about Impact. They do not pop people just, they don't, like, do shit that makes no sense just for the sake of popping the fans, you know? Right. Um, and sometimes I watch the matches and I'm like, I would like to see it a little more up-tempo and high-speed. and But then at the same time, I'm like, no, because – you know, they're actually selling and they actually have some kind of degree of ring psychology and they're, they right. don't, you know, so you, you take, you know, 
you take away uh, the ring psychology, you get that style of wrestling. You take away that style of wrestling, you got room for ring psychology. It's pretty hard to do both. So, um, yeah, we're fortunate that we watch this show every week and we review it, and we don't see as much as we might make fun of things or say something is bad or whatever. We don't get just nonsense like this. Yeah, I mean, like that was just crazy. And here's the thing: the the thing about this um, is, I feel like. I feel like part of me feels like Cody has kind of worked himself into a shoot with this. Uh, like Cody is clearly trying to win the fans over. He's clearly trying <laughs> to win the fans over because if you remember, if you remember uh, back when AEW first started, Cody was getting the heroes welcome all the time and it, with good reason, right? Because we know that like, we know Tony Khan's the money man, but we also know, that Cody is the reason that this that, that we're all here. You know what I mean? Like Cody leaving WWE and accepting the quote unquote challenge from Dave Meltzer to 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 sell out a ten thousand seat arena is the whole basis for the beginning of AEW. And the fans know that, and so Cody was always just you know lauded and and loved, and you know he's the only person who has the entrance that comes up through the middle of the stage, and like all of that, right? But like over time, you know, like the the fans have turned on Cody, you know what I mean? And it's not without reason. We, we don't have to dive into all that, you know. We don't have to dive into all that right now, you know. Maybe uh, may, may, maybe on another pod we'll uh we'll go into Cody and the saga of of why people are. <laughs> throwing his weight belt back at him. But um, but I got to tell you, man, like um, what's going on with Cody Rhodes is some of the funniest shit in all of wrestling. And I don't think it's intentional. That's just, you know, that's, that's, it's just, it's, it's just comedy. It's straight comedy. You know, and it's funny. I was, um, I was at Bound for Glory. I was there in the house when he showed up with Brandy and this place came unglued. I mean, there wasn't a pop of the night that was anywhere near this. And, I mean, I, I was right there with him. Cody, Cody. I mean, I was right there with him. And, you know, he had the little TNA run, and it, it was cool. It, it wasn't, you know, anything, wasn't drawing any new eyeballs. But you just compare that, um, that time in his life where he was fairly popular, and he just... He just went to the well one too many times. You know what I mean? Like instead yeah. of just doing what worked, he he kept trying to okay, well let's do the reality show. Let's let's get bloody every single grudge match. Yeah. Um, let me have any time <laughs> That I is right out of the book of Dusty right there. Yeah, and and um you know the AW doesn't do a lot of rematches. Mm -hmm. But he always gets a rematch to avenge his losses. Oh you damn, I mean? that's a great point. That yeah, is a so. great point. I never even thought of that, but you are a hundred percent right about that. AEW is big on not overdoing the rematches. I've even heard Tony Khan talk about how, like, you know, one of the things he specifically does to be different from WWE is not giving you the same matches week after week. And damn it, if Cody Rhodes doesn't face everybody three or four times, yeah, <laughs> everybody except Anthony Agogo. That was a yeah. uh, one shot, bring this guy out, squash him, and he hasn't been on TV in months. Well, I'll, I know why. We'll, we'll, we can talk off the air. That way we don't spin it off into too much AEW. Yeah. But we'll, let's, we'll take it back to this Fort Lauderdale thing. So, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was a pretty long AEW Miami rant. Miami cheers folks, everything. You know I mean? And but, go. <laughs> yeah. That was kind of a long AEW rant. This is an impact podcast, but it, we're, it's not because we were reviewing AEW. We're just, we're making fun of. <laughs> This ridiculous Cody going through a flaming table. Him and Andrade. Cody actually went through the flaming table, but somehow he got the pin. So absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll take it back to the Fort Lauderdale thing. So to me, maybe that's like that part of Florida just likes. They might not be like Mark fans, smart, smart fans or anything like that, but maybe they just enjoy, appreciate wrestling. Who knows? Like, I don't. I don't know. It's random to me. I can't even think of shows that run in that area, like independent, you know, popular independent promotions or anything. So I don't know. It, we'll see. Um, from what I've seen, that the the uh, the admin on the Impact channel there. I mean, I I don't believe they're from 
United States. So some hmm. of the, th- and I know just because some of the terminology and the wording and things like that. So I don't know how connected they necessarily are. I, I don't, I don't know. I don't watch it on YouTube as a stream, so I don't interact with whoever it is. Yeah. Maybe they're in the know of everything. <laughs> Who knows, you know, but. No, I mean, that's a great point. That's a great point. I, um, huh, huh. Oh, I never thought that the, the admin might be somebody who's like out, out of the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I, I thought it was Josh, Josh Matthews. I assume Josh Matthews does everything for Impact. Dude, that's how I was at one point. I was like, every time I read a tweet, I'm like, this is jo- Josh Matthews tweeting <laughs> <Right>. at us. <laughs> that's. <laughs> <laughs> He's probably like just sitting there in front of like um you know a computer screen. He has like the Instagram uh account open. He has the you know he has the the Twitter account open. He's just you know, what can I tweet about Impact? Yeah, yeah, and, and you could tell because a lot of but a lot of the time it was him, his terminology. That's why I kind of knew it was him. He he you know was a commentator for so long that you just knew all his terminology and his words and everything he said. So it was just always obvious to me that's who it was but right (laughs) (laughs) oh man um yeah so i mean why fort lauderdale you know i i don't know i like you said there's no reason for us to think that this is any sort of like wrestling hotbed i i don't recall hearing any shows ever be like oh we can't wait to go back to fort lauderdale like i remember like in the 80s when people were like obs- uh, uh, obsessed with uh, promoting spring break, we used to hear about like Fort Lauderdale all the time. So I bet like today, <laughs> Fort Lauderdale is probably like, you know, some rundown version of a town that was popping in the eighties. <laughs> Draw your own conclusion. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, like I, I just, I'd never heard like, I mean, is it close to a bigger city that loves wrestling? Like, I just, I don't, I don't know. I, it sounds like a weird place, again, especially when we know that Philly is a great wrestling town. We know that Boston is a great wrestling town. We know that, um, you know, different parts of California, right? Like L.A., I, I think is a good wrestling town. Uh, don't quote me on that. But I know, like, um, you know, I know, like, uh, it isn't like Battle of L.A. a huge thing every year? And, um, you know, like, so I just... I, just come with like the most random stuff. Remember they used to play, uh, they used to play the uh, casino in like some random Pennsylvania town. They used to do shows some like, I can't remember where the casino was, but it was like, <clears throat> it was like some, some out of the way Pennsylvania town. I'm just like, bro, like why not just go to Philly? You know what I mean? Like, I, is it more expensive to rent rent uh, a building in Philly? Maybe. But it just seems like you want to go where the fans are because that's going to make your product better and that's going to make more fans want to enjoy your product. But what do, what do I know? I'm just a I wrestling mean, fan. So I, I lived in Florida for seven years. Okay. Um, but up on the panhandle. So I wasn't close to Fort Lauderdale. Um, I'm the only person in history of the world to move from Florida to Illinois uh, voluntarily. But Mm -hmm. so I lived there for seven years. When I say that there were no independent wrestling shows in my area, there were none. Like if you, if there was an indie show, it was like one of those, you know, like Cornette says outlaw mud. You, You know what I mean? Like it, some local competitors that, you know, because you go to the show every single month, but, there was, you know, they weren't guys that anyone was checking for. It was just, just local shows, you know what I mean? But there was never like, hey, we're bringing in this dude or whatever. Like, and and trust me, I know because I was always looking. I was like, there's got to be something around here. Yeah. I know, you know, Shine does some shows down there. Um, I think the further south you go, I think I think there's more of a wrestling. Um, I don't, I wouldn't say a hotbed, but I think there's more of an audience for it. But I just know where I live. There was. What part nothing. of Florida is Fort Lauderdale in? That's close. That's down south. That's that's getting pretty close to Miami. So okay. Um, so will they get like some? Would fans from the Miami area, in theory, 
commute to Fort Lauderdale? I believe so. Someone can can correct me in the comments if they know for sure. Because uh, I have my my cousins live in Fort Lauderdale, and I'm pretty sure they always tell me it's they're close to Miami. So, okay, I'm pretty sure it's yeah within a commute. So I mean that kind of makes more sense as a plan, right? It's like let's play like for example, you we know that um, both AEW and Impact probably WWE too has been playing the greater Chicago area and just saying they're playing Chicago. Right. You know what I mean? Like they, they'll, they'll post up in, you know, whatever, some town that's like adjacent to Chicago and they'll be like, Oh, we're coming to you from Chicago. So maybe that's kind of what they're doing here. I, I mean, like, I, again, like you said, I don't know how close Fort, Fort Lauderdale is to Miami, but maybe it's close enough where people from Miami who are looking for something to do might travel Hopefully that's the case because I really want to see impact in front of some good, lively crowds, some people who are really, you know, willing to come out of their house, go in their pockets and come enjoy a show. Um, you know, like that's just, it's just the best thing for wrestling. You know what I mean? And we, you know, we talked about this last week. Like I would like to see them leverage the hometowns of their, their roster a little bit better. Or um, like if you went to Michigan, there's an audience there for like Jake something Rohit Raju. Um, I think Rhino might live up there. I could be wrong. I thought he lived in Michigan. You know what I'm saying? So I would just yeah, like yeah. to see them do that. You know, it seems like they never go anywhere near <laughs> where their roster's from. But, right, right. you know, they know better and do, they, they know better than us what they're trying to accomplish by moving around. But, right. but I'm happy right now with the Vegas tapings, you know, like we in a, in the past, have been like, oh my god, the Samstown Casino shows previously freaking sucked, you know. Yeah. And um, th- these these are not the same shows that we saw before. No, I agree, I agree. And <clears throat> I think you you had mentioned before about um, <clears throat> about um, you know how how you felt like the production is doing a better job now than it was before, and um, I follow some people. Sorry, I, sorry. <clears throat> I follow some people on social media who um, who who have been, you know, working in production for Impact, and I, I mean, like, look, man, I, I think they do a great job. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think they do a great job. Uh, <clears throat> I think a lot of the video packages are are good. I think there's a lot of people who can do this work really well. Um, I just I don't know that they are given. Um, I don't know that they're given the direction to do some of that cool stuff they can do, you know? Mm-hmm. So I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't know. I just feel like, um, I feel like, I feel like, you know, we will, we'll see the cool stuff impact can do when, um, when they get asked to do it, you know what I mean? Like uh, you can have talented video editors and producers, but, if you don't let them do anything great, then, you know, what's the point, you know? Yeah, so. I agree. We don't know what their capabilities are at the end of the day. Um, I, I haven't been shy of, of saying that I have not enjoyed the, the way the show's been edited for a while. Um, and I'll, I'll tell that to anyone who works for the company, and I have. You know, I don't I, – I haven't liked it at all. Um, but there, it's – right now it's looking and sounding – much much better. The whole video game whoosh, between segments was just. It <laughs> felt like this episode that they must have done it like fifty times. Like that sound is absolutely brutal. But um, <laughs> other than that, you know, like I, I just, I'm in. It's an easier watch for me than it was before. Um, mm-hmm. And I've, this is something I've been kind of wanting to say for a while. You know, because it. It's pretty often that I get on Twitter or even check sometimes YouTube comments and people are having conversations that, oh, I don't listen to BQ anymore because he, you know, he just complains about everything. He doesn't like everything. I mean, he doesn't <laughs> like anything. It doesn't matter how much I say, hey, if it's bad, I'm going to say it's bad, good to say it's good because I do say stuff is good, but people just overlook that part of it. They right. just like to, to, uh, to, to hear when I say I don't like something um, right. or they want me to say something that is good. That's not good. But right. Um, yeah. what I haven't like really told people, I actually put a, t- a tweet out the other day from the, 
when the pandemic kicked off until about Slammiversary of this year, I really was not enjoying this product. I had to really force myself to like a lot of the things because I was reviewing the show. And I was like, I can't sit here and hate everything, you know, but right. to be real honest, like I wasn't enjoying it. I was trying to convince myself. I mean, I was trying to talk to myself into, into closing down shop and saying, you know what? I can't do this anymore because I, it wasn't making me happy to watch the show and it wasn't making me happy yeah. to talk about it. I just, I didn't like it. It was, I, you know, I said many times podcasting, I was like, dude, this show's depressing, you know, like mm. the, just the way it looks and sounds and, and I knew there was a pandemic, but then I see everyone else finding creative ways to deliver um, empty arena wrestling or empty arena sports in general. And then that we're part. watching Impact and it's just an empty arena of people wrestling. Like there was just, you know, and then later they added the audience, whatever. But, you know, I wasn't enjoying it. I wasn't, I, I was, I was so many times like, dude, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> like this is not good. And, you know, um, since Slammiversary, I've like little by little started enjoying it again. And then right uh, with turning point and this current set of tapings, we had a couple of set, like a couple of episodes, like I'm getting excited again and I'm getting happy again and I'm enjoying it. And it's an easier watch for me. And I don't feel like there's as much to nitpick like this particular episode. There was nothing to write home about nothing, but I, really enjoyed watching the show there was there is you know there wasn't some phenomenal match everything got time almost but they weren't like necessarily good matches they were just i don't mean they weren't bad matches but they were just there was no stakes whatsoever in some of the a couple of the matches like it was just a match on tv that's what it was and um but i but i just enjoyed it they started doing backstage segments and they were in different part you know obviously different parts of arena it's a different arena but i mean that it looks so much different and um, just, yeah, Turning Point, though, was no shit. That was the moment I was like, dude, I'm really starting to like this again. I'm, nice. I'm getting back to where I was, man, because I I really had to, like, smile through gritted teeth, uh, you know, during the empty empty arena era. I, whew, it was, it, it was difficult, folks. But, um, but this was a good episode that, again, I, I don't think that, there was much to write home about, but it was a, it was easy to watch. It was easy to enjoy. Some of the backstage stuff was good. Scott Demore was on way way too much. Like, <laughs> I mean, my God, it's like he challenges himself every week to be like, you know what? I was on I was in three segments next last week. Let me do four this week. <laughs> and next week I'm gonna go for five. You know. <laughs> Um, I mean, listen, man, I think that, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, I think, you know, I don't know, bro. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? Here's a news piece. Here's, here's another thing that I think PWI put this out that Gail Kim is was supposed to start being an on-screen authority figure here soon. Oh, really? So I don't know if she's going to like take over for Scott because there's speculation and, and those who like the fantasy book and like to come up with things that is Scott Demore maybe like doing a heel turn because he's keeping Josh Alexander away from the world title or oh, something. Oh, like interesting. So, and, you know, and then there's some people like, dude, that's not what they're doing. But then you hear something like this where, oh, Gail Kim's going to start coming on screen more, which she should be on screen. Like sometimes impacts like allergic to putting hot women on TV. <laughs> you know, and that's why you know, I talk about that, you know, Dave Penzer being the ring announcer and then, you know, um, you know, having Jeremy Borash backstage, which I agree. He was with the company forever. And uh, at one point they had that investigative reporter guy running around backstage. I was like, yeah. why, why don't you just have hot women on TV? Like other companies do like, what are you doing? You know, um, you know, they could be trying to, you know, uh, respect their agency. You know what I'm saying? Like trying yeah. to not be like, okay, hey, go on TV and be hot. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> I, I I don't know. It, I always I listen, man. Like I um I find it. I, I think it's 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 a very interesting thing because you you want to make sure that like you know you're 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 respecting 
uh, people. You know, you never want to, you know, make anyone feel uh, compromised or anything of that nature. Um, but like, you know, like women who present themselves like, um, you know, like models, you know, they, they want you to, you know, look at the hard work they're doing on their bodies and, you know, all of that stuff. So, you know, I don't know. I'm just always curious as to what the, you know, what the line is as far as like, um, you know, like if somebody is again, like going out of their way to, uh, to, to present themselves as hot, right? Like they're presenting themselves for consumption, um, of their looks. Well, that, that, that means you're opening yourself up to both, uh, praise and criticism. But I mean, me as a general rule, right? Like I'm just, I'm not into like, you know, crapping on people. You know what I mean? Like I just generally try to stay away from things. I'm like, if, if this is something that might make this person feel bad, then I don't want to do it. And like, similarly, you know, it, if, if there's a, 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 a chance that something could be considered objectifying, you know what I mean? I just try to stay away from it. So I think that like, um, you know, when it comes to the idea of, you know, putting, uh, you know, like you said, just, just put a hot woman on TV. I'm like, yeah, because look, look there, there's, there's plenty of, again, you know, look at like the Melissa Santoses of the world, right? Like, she looks amazing, right? Like she works hard on her body. Plenty of women, right? Work very hard on her body. Plenty of men work very hard on their bodies and they want you to look at that hard work and be like, boom, you look great. You look hot. You look sexy, you know, but you, you know, whatever. But like the other side of that is like, okay. So then you say that and then dudes are in the audience going, oh, look at her tits. You know what I mean? And then it's like, yeah. well, are, are you putting them in a bad position? You know, because you, uh, you know, because you're you're putting them out there in a mini dress uh, to do ring announcing, right? And you're like, oh, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, respect this person's work in their mini dress. <laughs> like, right. I mean, like, I, I don't, I'm not. Listen, I'm not saying what's right. I'm not saying what's wrong. But I just, I think that, like, when it comes to those things, you have to choose, right? Like, you got, you got to choose. Are you gonna take the chance of of saying, "Hey, I'm gonna put her out here to be hot because she's hot," and then we'll just deal with whatever comes with it? Or you know, you just say, "Look, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna stay away from it." You know what I mean? Because you you never know. You know what I mean? So I, I don't know. I don't know what the answer is. You know what I mean? I I don't, I don't know what the answer is. I just think that it's it's interesting because you again you never want to make somebody feel like you're putting them in position to get um, objectified, right? But yeah, some of people want to be objectified. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Yeah, it just, you know? I mean, at the end of the day, sex sells. And that's just, that's just the way it is, you know? Like, yeah, I, dude, I, I see when I'm watching uh, ESPN or I'm watching Fox uh, Sports, you know, and, and you got Skip and Shannon or you got, uh, you know, Max and, and Stephen A. Smith. And then th there's always an attractive woman moderating. Like, it's just, you know, it, it's it works it's something that works yeah yeah you know? no listen i i think that you it, just like you said it's undeniable that that is clearly part of the formula right when you when you see um when when you see a lot of these shows so you're right and in, in, in a lot of those cases the decision is clearly made that we're going to put this person out there because they're good looking you know what i mean and so, um, so yeah, and again, and like, and when the people take those jobs, they know that they're, um, they're, 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 they're walking into, um, they're walking into a situation where they're benefiting from their looks, but they still want to be like, that's a, that's a perfect example, right? Like the, the, the women who sit in those chairs, they still want to be respected for their work and they do good jobs. You know what I mean? So like, so if you were to pluck any of the women who sit in those chairs and be like, oh, you just here because you look good. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think that would be disrespectful to the work they do. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? But yeah, but yeah. but we can clearly we can clearly watch that and see like, okay, boom, this is the setup. We got these two, you know, windbags and we're going to sit a beautiful woman in between them. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. So, so it, 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 it's tough. Do I think Impact should, you know, put more pretty women on TV? I don't know. Why not? Yeah, I, I, it wouldn't make, I wouldn't be unhappy to see more pretty women on TV, but I, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. Like I said, I'm, but I'm, but I'm not going to sit here and say that like 
that's their place in the business. Like that's just, to, to me, that doesn't feel right. But I totally agree that um, anything you can do to make the show more fun. Listen, when I was younger, I swear to God, the beautiful people was one of my main reasons I watched uh, TNA Impact. Mm-hmm. The when, when the like, I don't know if you used to watch the show back in the day, but when um, Velvet Sky and Angelina Love like first got together, and they were just like <laughs> <laughs> they were molesting the ring ropes like every right. every time when they come out. <laughs> and, <laughs> as a younger man. I was just sitting there going, you know what? This is good TV. <laughs> yeah. Yo, yeah, dude. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I mean, and then it helps with reaching the target demo too. I mean, no, look, they have Jim Miller. She's very attractive. Uh, this particular episode, I thought she really looked nice. Um, but it does help with your target demographic and the younger audience. You know, you put... Uh, you have multiple old fat white guys on the screen taking up time, you know, that the younger audience doesn't have interest in that. So you, you just right. gotta, you know, gotta have some, some kind of balance, you know, I don't think, yeah, yeah. Uh, but you know, I'm sure we're sure. pissing someone else off with this conversation. <laughs> I, I'm, I am. How sure. dare they sit there and have a conversation about, whether or not you should be objectifying, you know, like you're, you're right. Like there's, um, you're, you're never going to make everyone happy, right? Like there's people that will be annoyed by the fact that we're even having this conversation. How dare we? Absolutely. Yeah. Keeping so, it real, keeping it cool. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean like, but again, I, I think, I think that, you know, we have these conversations respectfully, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like um, we're just, we're, 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 we're talking opinions uh and yeah i mean like i think we certainly are not um you know like again like we're not we're not trying to objectify people you know what i mean like we're just talking about you know what whether we think something is good or bad and i think that's totally fine right you got to be able to have conversations you know what i mean you mm-hmm. got to be able to have conversations i think that like you know, when people complain about like society being too PC and like all of this stuff, like that's the type of stuff they're talking about. You know what I mean? Like you gotta, you gotta be able to have conversations. Sometimes it's going to be stuff you don't like. Sometimes it's going to be stuff you do like, but how would you know if you don't have the conversation? You know? Yeah. And we're, we're not sitting here like, Oh, we, I'd hit that or nothing. Like, you know, we're not, we're not talking <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Uh, so yeah man i mean like and that's the thing too man like for people that are you know we've going way off the rails here but i, I mean i don't know if we're off the rails. i'm like look yeah we just got an episode of impact talk about like you know whatever um but i think that you know listen that's one of the things people who listen to this podcast you always are gonna get um we're gonna have honest discussions you know we're gonna uh talk about them from you know, a grown man perspective, um, you know, it may not always be something you like. And if you don't like it or you do like it, feel free to disagree with us in the comment. You know what I mean? Like, um, we don't need you guys to pat us on the back and tell us that we're right. Although, you know, we usually are. But, um, <laughs> but you know, like I said, if you guys want to discuss, feel free to jump in the comments or or holler at us on the Twitter. You know what I mean? We tweet back. So, yeah, so we, we're going to, if, if there's something out there to be talked about, we're going to talk about it. And by the way, this conversation got here because we were talking about um, a, a part of the impact product. And that's ultimately why we're here is to talk about the impact product. So, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So let's do that. We, we've, uh, we've been chatting for a while here. So why don't we get into this episode, run it All down. Right. Let's see what we got here. All right. So this week's episode of Impact um, got us back on track after the holiday episode. We came, we welcomed back from from Wrestle House. Um, by the way, I don't know if you saw, but I saw a lot of people tweeting about the uh, Chris Bay follow Ba match from BTI last week. Did you get a chance to check that? Never. I didn't. <laughs> right. <laughs> Never <laughs> BTI. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't see the match. I didn't see the match, but um, but everything Chris Bay does is pretty much excellent. So I'm sure that's worth checking out. All right, let's see what we got here. All new impact from Las Vegas is on the air. Matt Cardona kicks off impact. 
Matt Cardona is in the ring to address his loss to W. Morrissey at Turning Point. Cardona says that he had Morrissey beat until Moose got involved and speared him while the referee was down. Cardona calls out Moose because the only reason he's here is to become Impact World Champion. Speaking of the champ, Moose interrupts and confronts him face to face. Moose tells Cardona that he'll never be a top guy in this business and ask if he really wants to step in the ring with the wrestling god. Moose calls him a mid Carter. He calls him, I think, mid Cardona. And uh, mm-hmm. Cardona, he exploded, he took out Moose with a flurry of offense. W. Morrissey blindsided Cardona, and then he falls victim to the numbers game. Moments later, Eddie Edwards makes the save as he and Cardona and Moose and Morrissey, they send Moose and Morrissey retreating up the ramp. Uh, what do you think about this opening segment here to get things started? So this was good stuff. At first, when they announced, you know, Impact's going to kick off with Matt Cardona, I was like, the hell does this guy have to say? <laughs> now, <laughs> let me ask this question, first of all, because I, it feels like a lifetime ago that before Wrestle House that we watched an actual episode did uh, Cardona and Morrissey have a number one contenders match? <sighs> Is where we yes. sit here talking about it this show. Like it. It sounds like it. I feel like, like it. <laughs> I feel like two weeks ago Morrissey beat him, but and Moose helped him win or something like that. That sounds right. So that, and I, I think they did have a. I, no wait wait. So they, he he yes he came out here to complain about losing to Morrissey at Turning Point. So, yes. It's turning. Oh, my God. Yeah. Yes. Why do I feel like this was just years ago, this match? It feels like it. Kind of feels yeah. like it. Um, okay. Yeah. So, uh, clearly, I wasn't fully listening to what Cardona had to say. I, I just, I, was, <laughs> I, and I don't really mind him. I know you, I like him more than you do, but I, I was just kind of like, all right, let's get to the point. Moose, I'm sure Moose is going to come out. There's going to be other shenanigans. You know, there's just a formula. Um, but no, I, I enjoyed it. I thought Moose's mic work was, dude, he's always good. He's always gold. Like, I, man, I can't say enough good about him. Uh, when Eddie Edwards came out, I'm kind of like, here we go again. You know, like, mm-hmm. it, I've always said, like, it's the same people running out with the main event picture. You know what I mean? It's always Eddie right. Edwards coming out. It's Moose. It's Sammy Callahan. It's just the same, same little group, you know, and. I feel like what they're doing with Moose, Morrissey, and Cardona is fresh. It's different. It's something different in the main event scene. And then it was kind of like, and I love Eddie Edwards. Don't get me wrong. But then when he comes running down, it's like, here we fucking go again. You know, <laughs> um, just it's the same, you know, usual suspects. We just had this Eddie Edwards program with Moose and Morrissey a couple months ago. And like, here we are back again. Right. Um, we saw Eddie Morris, Eddie and Morrissey fight like nine times, uh, in like True. every version of street fight that you can think of. True. <laughs> um, and here we are again. So, um, no, but I enjoyed it with the exception of the stuff at the end. Like I, I thought it was good. Moose just steals the show to me. He's everything he says is great. Wow, this is some great love for Moose you got here. Oh, dude, Moose. Oh, Moose, amazing. Uh. All right, so um, this pretty much all led to uh, Scott Demore backstage laying down the law. Um, everybody was coming to Scott Demore trying to get a title shot, and you know what he does is he makes it a tag team main event for tonight. It's going to be Matt Cardona and Eddie Edwards against Moose and W. Morrissey, and Demore tells Cardona that he needs to prove that he deserves an Impact World Title opportunity. All right. Um. Violent by Design said that they they claim that Rich Swan and Willie Mack are standing in their way of claiming the power they deserve uh, and they control that the, they crave. All right. Uh, Jordan Grace, Rachel Ellering, Tasha Stills, and Savannah Evans all want to be in the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match at Hard to Kill. Demore says that the six competitors will be announced next week, but for now, Ellering and Evans will settle their business inside the squared circle in a singles match. So All right. two Scott Demore segments before we get another match. That's right. That's right. Uh, so Matthew Raywalt with Deanna Perrazzo uh, versus Chris Saban. Uh, Matthew, by the way, let me just, before we even get into this. So De- Deanna Perrazzo is 
doing this thing now where she's wearing jeans and a, a, a rolled up t-shirt and she's got her hands taped. I like it. You know yeah. what it actually reminds me of? It reminds me of, um, remember the Attitude Era where all of a sudden people stopped wearing wrestling gear and started wearing like jeans and cut off oh, t-shirts yeah. and bandanas. And I'm looking at you, Shawn Michaels. And uh, it just, it, it felt weird and like out of place. I was like, oh, I guess these guys are tough now. Right. And uh, it, it was funny, but that's kind of, that's what I see here. Right. That's, that's what I see here. I see like, you know, Deanna Perrazzo, Um, This is like, this is Deanna with an attitude, but her hair is completely done and, and down. Uh, uh, like, I feel like if he was going to fight, listen, um, in, 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 in my schools that I went to, when girls were getting ready to fight, they put that hair up. Okay. Because right, first right. thing, first thing girls do is they go for a handful of that hair. Um, I, you know, Deanna Perrazzo, if she's, if she's a tough guy now, I would think she probably want to, you know, get a ponytail or something. You know what I mean? But no, she got, the, she got the joint down, but the fist are taped. That's what you need to know. The fist are taped. So she means business. All right. Um, Matthew Raywalt looks to understand the art of Chris Saban by going one on one with him right here, right now. Deanna Perrazzo joins Matt Stryker and D'Lo on commentary as she reveals that she's going back to her roots as a Fujiwara, Fujiwara specialist in order to reclaim the Knockouts World Championship. That explains the outfit change. Saban hits the top rope crossbody in the early going. Raywalt sends Saban flying from the apron to the floor to swing the momentum in his favor. Ray Walt hits a pendulum elbow drop for two. Saban quickens the pace, connecting with a tornado DDT out of the corner. Both men are down following a double clothesline. Perrazzo leaves commentary and confronts Saban on the apron. Ray Walt capitalizes off the distraction with the end scene. Knockouts world champion Mickey James makes her way to ringside where she brawls with Perrazzo and drives her into the steel ring post. In the ring, Saban connects with the cradle shock to win. Chris Saban gets the win over Matthew Ray Walt with Deanna Perrazzo. Um, Mickey James is going to defend the Knockouts World title against Deanna Perrazzo in a highly anticipated rematch at Hard to Kill live January 8th on pay-per-view. Um, you got any thoughts on this right here? I have a prediction they're going to they're gonna turn this into like a no DQ street fight bullshit match. I, I feel like they're going that direction with it. Um, you know, prior to Bound for Glory, the build between Deanna and Mickey James was phenomenal. And I, I hope they get back to being creative instead of we're going to jump. I'm going to jump you one week and then you jump me the next. Like, let's not get, let's not get to that. Like, it was very creative before. I just don't, you know. I don't want it to be a shell of what it was before this, this whole feud. Um, so I, I want to say about Deanna first. I said this when Rich Swan lost the title, that I really feel like when you're a champion and you drop the belt, like you have to come back a little bit different the next time we see you on TV. You got to have a little bit of time off TV and then you got to come back and you, you have to tweak the character a little bit. I've, I've always felt that way. And that's exactly what Deanna Prazo is doing. So what you, what you see her doing is what I wanted to see them do with Rich Swan. what I felt they should have kind of done with Eddie Edwards. I guess maybe it's easier to do with heels and with baby faces, but I do feel that like losing the title should change you um, and change your way of thinking. The backstage segment <laughs> with Saban and... Ray Wall, I thought was really funny. And when he said, I want to experience you, he's like, that's the weirdest challenge way I've ever heard, you know, a challenge, whatever he said. But I <laughs> thought that shit was funny. <laughs> and um, this match was so long. I don't even know what happened in the match. Like I was, I was more so listening to Deanna. And I want to say, because I've for years now been beating down impacts commentary. Now they're doing it. They're back doing it ringside instead of doing the, the post, the post-production stuff. And this is like a brand new show. I mean, they, it's like they improved overnight. It's just, it was more natural. And, um, and I'm self-aware. I know I don't have the most natural speaking voice in the world myself. Like, you know, so when I, I know I always say that about 
D'Lo and Stryker. It'll just rehearse and it's fake and this and this. But man, it, it just, there's such an improvement in the commentary. But I want to say, Deanna there was a very different wrinkle because we don't get that. We don't, I guess it's because we had the, the, the empty arena stuff for so long and the post, you know, they've been doing the, the commentary and post-production for a while. I mean, remember Josh and Madison were doing it. Um, I don't know if Josh and Don were ever doing it at, at one point, but, but Josh and Madison definitely were. But we, it's been like years since we've had a wrestler come down and sit in commentary, and I really enjoyed the conversation. What, what, what really made me pop, what made me laugh when she was like, did you call me D? We're not friends. <laughs> uh, that was funny also. But it was just a new dynamic. That there was just a little bit of banter, and it, it was natural. You know, at times it was funny. At times it was serious. Uh, it, got, it gave us a chance to understand Deanna Perrazzo's character change a little bit, the character arc. Who knows what was going on in the, in the ring? I, I mean... I, I, I don't. I couldn't even tell you one move they did in that match. But um, I, I enjoyed listening to Deanna. And it was, I hope that they do more of this every episode because it breaks up the monotony. I always, I always said, you know, the last, over the last year, every episode looks the same. It feels the same. Like, I didn't feel that way with these last two episodes. I thought they both felt different. And then adding this was something that made it feel a little bit different. So that's the kind of stuff I'm talking about. Mm-hmm. I don't want to see the the... The cookie cutter, like, you know, there's no doubt in my mind. And I'm sure I'm not just talking about them. It's any kind of, uh, you know, TV show. You would know better than me. But they have, there's no doubt in my mind that they have this storyboard, so to speak. They're like, hey, this is how the show is going to go every week. And it's, I feel like it's just the same segments they just changed the players they just changed the the wrestlers and everything but it always felt like the same format of show every single week there was just no nothing different about it whatsoever so that's why we said every episode feels the same so again having having like diana just come and, and, and be on commentary it just it just made it gave me a feeling i haven't got in a while because we just haven't got nothing like that so yeah talk forever no, 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 no. I mean, I, I, I mean, I think that was good. Um, I don't know about Deanna on commentary. Listen, I'm a big fan of um, the the subtlety and the nuance of Deanna Perazzo's heel work. I love it. You know what I mean? I, I love it. I think that like um, her character on TV comes off as annoying and narcissistic and evil and uh you know just somebody who you want to see get their their comeuppance you know what i'm saying so i i um uh, but that's but that's good i mean she does that means she does great heel work i'm not supposed to like her you know what i'm saying like i'm not supposed to like her and she does that on purpose so when she's on my tv i'm like get her off my tv or beat her up you know what I mean? But I'm supposed to feel that way. You know what I mean? Because she's doing a great job being uh, a detestable heel. So when she's on commentary, um, uh, contrast that with like on AEW, they put random guys on, they'll put Jericho, you know, on on uh, commentary. And he's like, banana, banana. You know what I mean? Like he's just, just doing stupid stuff on he's commentary. Saying, yeah. But it's like, but it's funny, you know what I mean? It's 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 like it's it's not like hilarious funny. It's just like this is part of this silly, stupid wrestling show. And Diana Perrazzo was like not popping me in that way, you know what I mean? Um, but again, I think that's by design. You know what I mean? Like I don't think she wanted to come out here and be like entertaining because that's not. That's not what a heel's supposed to do, right? Like the heel's not supposed to do moon salts because that's gonna get you excited and make you clap. The heel's supposed to do stuff that makes you aggravated and upset so that you want to see them lose. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right? Like so, so to me, I the more I'm talking through this, I'm like, this is more just excellent work by Diana Perrazzo as far as like the art of, of pro wrestling, you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, I mean, she, she's dope. She's dope. I like the outfit change. You know what I mean? I like the character change. Just like you mentioned, that was one of the first things I brought up when we got on this segment. And so, yeah, man, look, Deanna Perrazzo is dope. I think she 100% has earned her place as one of the top women in the world of wrestling today. So 
That's that. Ugh. Ugh. I had to say something nice about Deanna Perrazzo. Ugh. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Virtuosa. <laughs> uh, by the way, have you subscribed to Deanna Perrazzo's OnlyFans yet? I haven't. <laughs> anybody out there in impact lounge world if you have subscribed to diana perrazzo's only fans uh let us know you know what how, how's the content you know what i mean is it is it uh is it worth your dollars you know like how, how's the experience is she interactive with her with her uh her, her her patrons on there you know what i mean i so so much i need to know so much i want to know um i also i saw today rachel ellering post on twitter that she has an OnlyFans where she's just, um, you know, I guess she sells like ring worn gear and that type of stuff, which I think is just like, it's, it's really interesting because when you think OnlyFans, you think nudes, you know what I mean? But these women aren't selling nudes. They're just, they're just, they're selling like fan experiences and, you know, pictures, probably a lot of the same stuff they post on Instagram and Twitter, you know what I mean? But it's just a way that you can actually support the, you know, Su su support the the wrestler which i think is great um they need to find as many revenue streams as possible because you know the way the wrestling business work you know it ain't, it ain't really no retirement plan you know so. yeah you know um jordan grace she was on uh taylor wilde's podcast and she's established her only fans as as extremely successful i mean she does a great job with it she said she makes more from only fans monthly than she does wrestling yeah nice so that's you know so uh, that's a good person for Rachel to learn from, you know, right. uh, obviously they're very close. So that's, uh, that's good. Um, you know, it's no different than, you know, a Patreon. I subscribed to Allison K's Patreon, uh, cause that's my homie and, uh, and, uh, Marty Bell. Oh, I think that's it. Oh, how's yeah. those, uh, how, how's that content? I, 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 um, I mean, just from the stuff Allison K post on, you know, like Twitter, like I've, I've been tempted to subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a good, I'm one of her very first ever, uh, Patreon. So, um, I, I saw her and, um, Marty at the NWA, the, uh, the empower show. Uh -huh. And, um, I went up to him and she's like, you know, Allison says, you're funny. Say something funny, funny guy. <laughs> and do it on cue <laughs> but uh <laughs> not that i show Why that personality did you get across the road <laughs> yeah <laughs> i know next time i have this list of list of dad jokes for her, you know a horse funny. walks into a bar so bartender says why the long face you know yeah. so, uh, <laughs> or uh a guy walks into a bar and says ouch yeah, <laughs> that one I know. Yeah, I, dude, I heard that one in high school and I was dying laughing. Like, that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. Oh, I, don't know, I don't know why. You see, people, this is what you come for, okay? Come for the impact review, stay for the dad jokes, baby. We got we go. you. We got you. <laughs> All right, back to the show. Um, so Chelsea Green and Alicia are eager to compete in the first ever Knockouts Ultimate X match at Hard to Kill. After being decimated by Eric Young a few weeks ago, Jai Vidal begs Scott Demore for another opportunity, claiming that he is hard to kill. Demore tells him that he has a matchup next against Jonah. And um, you want to guess how this went? Jonah versus Jai Vidal? Do you want to? You want to? You want to guess? I'm kind of pretty. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say uh, this dude got his absolute ass whooped. Yes, 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 yes. Do, does the uh, does the phrase "roadkill" mean anything to you? <laughs> he squashed the shit out. Um, <laughs> now nah, he destroyed this guy, and it was dope. Like this dude Jonah, he's a fun watch. He's a big dude, very powerful, and um, he doesn't do flippy stuff. I am listen. The novelty of big guys doing flippy stuff is way gone with me. Um, but this guy does stuff that makes sense right like he'll beat you down and then do a giant splash off the top rope because you're getting crushed by this 300 plus pound man off the top rope it seems like it would hurt a lot right it's like yeah. the exact opposite of darby allen's coffin drop sorry for the aw fans <laughs> um all right well, yeah, don't 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 uh don't message me on this um all right so after the match jonah gets on the mic and calls himself the top dog jonah recalls confronting 
uh, Impact World Champion Moose at New Japan Pro Wrestling in San Jose, and he says that he deserves to be the champion. Jonah sends a verbal message to Josh Alexander and says that if he wants to be next in line for a title shot, he needs to go through the top dog. So that's good. Continuing the Josh Alexander situation with Jonah after what Jonah did to him when he showed up, leaving Josh Alexander bloody blood cup coming up out of his mouth. That was like, that's that's a debut, baby. That's yeah, how you come man. in the door. Um, all right. So Gia Miller interviewed X Division champion Trey Miguel following his victory over Laredo Kid and Steve Macklin at Turning Point. And even though he won the match, he's disappointed because he didn't pin Macklin and his undefeated. Oh, he didn't end Macklin's undefeated streak in the process. Macklin blindsides Trey Miguel, of course, because nobody can get through an interview backstage. Uh, and a huge <laughs> brawl breaks out. Somehow Trey Miguel ends up on top of something and he dives onto Macklin and like three or four security guards. It was like a uh uh, it was like it was like a senton. It was it was crazy. Um, we got VSK and Zicky Dice FaceTiming Brian Myers, uh, vowing to right the wrong of VSK's loss to Rich Swan at Turning Point, and Brian Myers kept hanging up on him. That was actually really <laughs> funny. Uh, let's see. Moose convinced W. Morrissey to help him take out Matt Cardona tonight in exchange for a future Impact World Title opportunity. There was a lot of tension going on right there. Uh, Morrissey really didn't want to keep helping Moose, but, you know, of course he did because he's a stupid bad guy. All right. Former UFC light heavyweight, excuse me, lightweight champion Anthony Pettis was in attendance for Impact. It was in Vegas. Um, the next match we got was... The girl he was with was, woo! Yeah, you like that? You say like that? that? <laughs> <laughs> Um, all you got to do is win the UFC championship and you too can sit next to someone who looks like his girlfriend. There we um, go. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Savannah Evans with Tasha Stills took on Rachel Ellering uh, with Jordan Grace. Rachel Ellering looked to even the score with Savannah Evans in this heated rematch. Ellering builds momentum with a running shoulder tackle, but Savannah shuts her down with a bridge suplex. Savannah remains in control with a butterfly suplex. Savannah blocks the springboard leg drop as Jordan gives Ellering some words of encouragement. Ellering begins to fight back with a series of strikes, followed by three running sentons. Tasha gets involved, but Ellering makes her pay with a clothesline. Moments later, Ellering hits the fireman's carry cutter on Savannah to win. So Rachel Ellering got the win. Um, I, I just want to say, you know, these matches are a little bit rough because um, Rachel Ellering and, and Savannah Evans, they're both people that need to be working with more experienced people. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like neither of them is really experienced enough or, or, just good enough at this point as far as like leading the match to where you're going to go out there and have a dope match. So, I mean, you know, I guess iron sharpens iron, right? Like the idea is you want to, I guess, have them grow together. But, um, but yeah, I mean, like, uh, you know, uh, th this match was like, it was, it was fine, but it probably could have been a lot better. Yeah. Um, you, well, you ran down a lot of stuff there. Uh, I, I did screenshot Alicia when she came on screen. I, I thought, did you? Yeah, I had to shoot, get a screenshot. I want to say about um, Jonah, though, with his debut. First of all, his opponent, very comfortable in his own skin, I must say. Mm -hmm. um, but, it, you know, it was different. Uh, <laughs> but, but Jonah, I've never really seen him before. And uh -huh. that big splash of his is deadly. Like, uh, it's a big splash. Willie Mack already has a big splash. You know, I'm always going to point out these finishers that – we all like the, they all like to share, but uh -huh. his is very different and uh, it's, it's pretty badass. So as far as Rachel with one of the best theme songs in impact and uh, but speaking of theme song, dude, Joan has got a really weird entrance, really weird entrance music. Like you got to pay attention to it next time. It, it doesn't sound like it's like some random mumbling and talking or something like that. It's, huh. it's very different. I didn't particularly like it. Um, but, you know, as far as Jordan, not Jordan, but Rachel and Savannah Evans, I, I mentioned previously that they wrestled on BTI, the one mm -hmm. episode I watched, and I didn't enjoy the match. Right. And I thought maybe I was not watching. I, I was missing something because people on social media were saying how good that match was. 
and some people, oh, they tore the house down. And I'm just like, I, I didn't get that. I, di- I didn't see that. You know, I almost wanted to watch the match again. But then I was like, I'm not going to watch it again because it's BTI. And I said I was never going to watch that again after sitting through it once before. Um, this didn't, this wasn't that much different to me. Uh, but it was okay. You know, they, I don't know what she went for as a finish at the end, but that was awful. <laughs> I, I don't know if she was trying to do a TKO. And, uh, uh Delos started yelling cutter, which if I hear the word cutter again, I'm like, <laughs> oh my God, is that not just the most, uh, Cornette was going on this thing about the cutter the other day. He's like, it's the cutter when it's the diamond cutter. Right. He's like, you can't just call it a cutter because that yeah. doesn't make sense. And he goes, Randy Orton came up with an original name for it. Why can't everybody else? Yeah. <laughs> that was like, so true. <laughs> Um, but I think it was a TKO, which is a finisher that I fucking hate. I've always hated that. EC3 started doing that for a while. It never came out. It never looked good. Um, and, uh, and, uh, I think the ODB does that too. And, and, and there's, dude, I've never liked that move. I think it always looks like shit. And if that's what she was going for here, cause I think it was like, it, it looks really bad. It's. I just don't think it's a. I just think it's a move. They just need to get rid of in wrestling because mm-hmm. I mean it only works if you can if you can. You know, fling that opponent around to the side and they're straight as a pencil. Right. When they hit the ground, and it's it just seems like that's never what happens. So, um, it, it was cool. This was better than the BTI one, I, I must say. But uh, it was. I was. I was ready for it to be over. Right. Yeah. And and that's not obviously what you want. Right. I mean, like, you know, <clears throat> you know, you got, you only got like so much TV time. Right. You know, you just, you don't want people sitting there going like, yo, let me hurry up and get this done. You just, I, I, I don't, I don't think that's good for anybody. You know, as far as this knockouts match, he's like, I'm going to announce who it is next week. He, let's see, let me count my head. One, two, three, four. He only talked to six girls this episode. And there's six mm. girls in the match, right? So he talked to Laurel Van Ness. I'm just kidding, Chelsea Green. <laughs> he talked to Savannah and, and um, uh, Tasha Steeles. He talked to Alicia Edwards. And then he talked to Jordan and Rachel. So, you know, he's going to announce six girls next week. He talked to six girls. I just feel like those are the six girl that, <laughs> girls that are going to be in the match. Probably. Probably yeah, the exact I mean, six. Just, yeah. So. But I got to tell you, though, man, like, I I am, I am just, like, I'm looking forward to, to this match. Like, it's going to be something we've never seen before. Yeah. How often do we really get something in wrestling that we've never seen before? True. You know? Yeah, very true. I think like uh you know I, I don't know man I just, I just think it's like um I, I think it's it's something to look forward to for sure so I'm definitely just yeah I'm I'm looking I'm looking forward to it so yeah yeah, yeah. I I am excited to see what they do and and yeah it, it's a it's a first time match we're never going to get a first you know we might get this match again but it's you know in this capacity no so uh it, it should be excellent um but you got to believe, you got to think, you know, Mar- uh, say Melissa, uh, Mercedes Martinez. I mean, she would be really good for the match. Some people want to see, you know, some of these debuting or newer girls, Lady Frost, um, Masha Slamovich. I, I don't know if that's going to happen. I, I feel like it's going to be the six we saw on TV. Yeah, probably. Um, Lady Frost, though, she doesn't like somebody who would be good for a match like this. And when I'm thinking of people who would probably be good for a match like this, I'm just thinking of like, you know, who's in like really outstanding physical shape. Um, you know, the point you brought up before about like, you know, being able to navigate the rope, which, uh, you know, upper body strength, you know what I mean? As far as like, you know, not, not pull-ups, but like, you know, whatever you would call it, where you're like, kind of, you know, just kind of crawling across, not crawling, but, you know, working your way across, uh, with your hands. Um, And I think like, you know, Lady Frost, she's somebody who just looks to be in that kind of shape. 
Um, so yeah, I mean, I think you gotta, you, you, you gotta think, but you also gotta think creatively about, you know, what your finish is going to be, you know? Um, mm-hmm. so I'm just, you know, I, 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 like I said, you could be like, ah, what is this? I have no idea. Or you could be like, yo, we're going to see something we've never seen before. And regardless of whether or not, you know, we think it's going to be a, a, a crap show, we are going to see something we never saw before. So, mm-hmm. you know, so I'm here for it. All right. Uh, Tanil Dashwood back from a trip around the world and the influence is whole again. Madison Rain tells her that the inspiration became the new Knockouts World Tag Team Champions while she was gone. Uh, Dashwood storms off in search of her fellow Australians. The inspiration is thrilled to see her uh, and the two groups hit it off. Uh, Caleb with a K was just kind of like hanging out there trying to, you know, make sure he's included. But Madison Rain didn't look like she was uh, super comfortable with that whole situation. So I think there's a uh, potentially teasing a little a little dissension there. A little fake friendship, a little frenemy situation. What do you think about that? Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking too. I hope I hope they don't though, because I like the influence together. But uh, we we discussed it last week that Danielle Monet was at the set of taping, so we don't know if she's just there visiting because she's friends with Tanil, or they're going to make a. I, I always said previously, I said it before, like she would be great for the part to be the partner of uh, Tanil. You know, um, obviously that never came to fruition. Madison is great for that role too. So it, it'll be interesting. But um, at first I thought they were going to act like they didn't know each other. Uh, Tennille and the, the uh, inspiration. Uh-huh. Um, and that was going to be like, okay, that's, we're going to insult. They're going to insult our intelligence now. But this the segment was kind of, it, it was different. But it was, I, I, it was funny. It made me laugh. Um, but I, yeah, I wonder. It's it, it's a pretty good way to prolong keeping the you know I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like, there's no good programs for either of those teams at the moment. Mm-hmm. So, I think this is a good w- side storyline to have, where to they're you know don't necessarily have to wrestle or anything. Right. Um. Yeah. Like you said. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it'll be interesting to see. Um. You know, I, I don't know. I, mean, I think it'll be interesting to see uh, just, you know, what they do. It's something different. Again, um, you know, you have two people doing like the annoying mean girl tag team. Why not? Let's just let's see where it goes. Let's, let's see where it goes before we dump on it. All right. Uh, Rich Swan and Willie Mack seek revenge on their longtime rivals, Violent by Design. Rich and Willie hit the Diener Flapjack Bulldog. OK, here's what happened in this in this match. Rich Swan and Willie Mack are great. You know what I mean? Like they're they're a really good tag team. I don't know why they're not competing for the tag team championships. They yeah. would be a good set of tag team champions. Um, Willie hit a Samoan drop on Diener, and Rich followed up with the 450 splash for the win. You know that was dope. But then Violent by Design starts to beat them down, and then then Heath and Rhino come out <laughs> to save the day. I mean, man, oh my God, like, bro, come on. I mean, like, do they have some inside intel that tells them that Rhino and Heath, like that the ratings go up when they come on TV? Because they are getting those guys on TV a lot and with Violent by Design and nobody else. So like, I I think it's time for Heath and Rhino to move on to something else. Absolutely, man. Like Heath and Rhino, I mean, uh, Violent by Design lost the match. And then they get beat down after the match, too. I mean, um, <laughs> are they entering the OVE territory? Absolutely, dude. And that you don't <laughs> want to get into that territory, man. Uh, Swan and Max should they should be champions, dude. Like, we're, we're gonna deal. I, I feel like this whole good brothers thing, you know, please sign with us. You can do whatever you want, you can promote your merchandise, you can hold the tag team titles 90% of the time you're in the company. We just need you to drop it once so we can get in the good graces of New, New Japan Pro Wrestling. And then you can cut all the unfunny promos you want and run through all our tag teams and then leave and go to AEW. Like, that's basically the way this is, like, shaking out. 
And uh, yeah. I was really disappointed when they, you know, they beat Swan and Mac. Like, I think those guys would just make good champions. At this point, you got to put the tag belt on Rich Swan to keep to um, to get him hot again, because he cooled off big time after that loss to Kenny Omega. We talk about all the yeah. time. Never came across like he was credible. Never came across like he had a chance of winning the match. And then they and then they have him lose to Morrissey immediately after that. And it's like. Okay, when are we gonna give Rich Swan? We got to, you know, the, you, he was your champion. You can't just be like, okay, well, now he's a mid carder again. He's a he's an X division guy again. Like, give, give these guys a, a run with the belts. Like, my God. Um, yeah. But Violent by Design, dude, they bore the shit out of me, man. I, it's just kind of the same shit every time with the promos. They, I mean, they always look a little different, and you know, they try to switch the stuff up, stuff up. But it's to me, it's just the same. Same old, same old. I think they could use a, a female. I really do, uh, to just add a little more, in, just just to break up. You know, sometimes you have those groups. It'd be like two dudes, three dudes, four dudes, and then you just throw a girl in there, and it just breaks up the dynamic of it a little bit. And right. I said the same thing about OVE too. Uh, but, you know, but I, I really think they could benefit from that. But Heath and Rhino came out. I was like, dude, what 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 is this? Like, why are they attacking them? Like, they've they've already beat them. And they beat him, like, weeks ago, too. Like, you can't still be mad. Right. And the whole thing at the pay-per-view was supposed to be, like, the resolution. Yeah. Right? Like, that's supposed to be, like, the whole thing. So, I mean, what? I don't know. But they clearly feel like Rhino versus Eric Young is the blow-off. Um, they're going to do. They're gonna try something new, never done before, um, and to have a street fight, <laughs> uh, you know. Old school rules, ECW style, baby. Oh my god! Get the trash cans and, uh, dude. It, what's funny was uh, just a couple of days ago, I was like, man, they haven't had a no DQ match in a while, like they're or a street fight. They're they're due, because at one point, they were doing that every single and they for, for they basically did it at Turning Point with a Full Metal Mayhem match, but right. uh, but that one's a little bit different. I mean, you had the the ladder in it, so it's different, but. I was thinking to myself, I was like, dude, they haven't done this in a while. And then they went right back to that shit. I'm like, dude, there's certainly, I mean, surely there's another match that we can come up with. Um, you know, maybe every once in a while throw a two out of three falls match at us or, you know, a strap match. If you really want to get, do something hardcore that you don't really do, like th- just be different. Like, yeah. oh shit, this means nothing. Arm wrestle, arm wrestle. You guys yeah, remember arm, over the there top? We go. With Sylvester Stallone, arm wrestle. Turn the hat around backwards when it gets real serious, and then we know it's on. Have a slap fight. <laughs> oh, my God. Yo, hold up. Have you seen these slap fights? Have you seen those? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. Yo, I remember. <clears throat> so I live in the New York market, and uh, the the hip-hop radio station in this area is Hot 97. And <laughs> Hot 97 has a big concert every year called summer jam it's 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 a real big deal um you know yeah, we have that in la about, yeah, okay oh, oh yeah okay yeah but uh but th- this is different okay because it's new york okay back up. Oh, uh, <laughs> no, the, uh, but if you, like famously uh jay-z started his beef with nas at summer jam you know he uh he roasted prodigy for mob deep on the big screen uh, you know I mean? like so, summer, summer summer jam is a huge event so people really wanted to go to summer jam so Hot 97 would have this thing called Slap Fest, in which they would invite two people to come up to the studio and slap each other for summer jam tickets. This was a thing. It happened. And I am positive it exists somewhere out here on Al Gore's internet. You just got to, you know, <laughs> g- Google it and find it. Uh and and I, I I guarantee you this will be worth your time. Slap fest. As a matter of fact, listen. If anybody wants tickets to Hard to Kill, <laughs> you uh you gotta find two Impact fans, and you guys have a slap fest. And me and BQ will give tickets to Hard to Kill. There'll be nosebleeds, but there'll be tickets to Hard to Kill. Maybe to a meet and greet and not you know maybe to dinner at a restaurant near where hard to kill is taking place 
Um, we'll, we will give about you, this. we'll give you, uh, my... uh, we'll give you a, uh, a code for, uh, fight TV <laughs> to watch hard to kill <laughs> <laughs> for winning a slap battle against another impact fan. A Have fight TV it. code. A fight TV code is the exact opposite of we'll, we'll send you to hard to kill and pay for your dinner. <laughs> right it's exactly. like you reneged on that you're like well, yeah, yeah. if you noticed every offer got got worse and worse first it was right. tickets hard to kill then it was nosebleeds then it was dinner somewhere near hard to kill <laughs> right Next is by, by the time i'm done um I'll, I'll facetime you while i'm watching hard to kill and you can watch on my facetime <laughs> yeah <laughs> and then you, you can smell my dinner on my breath <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's what it's going to be. <sighs> Shit, but yeah. All right. Oh, so God. it was time for the main event. Uh, it was uh, W. Morrissey and Matt Cardona versus, uh, I'm sorry, W. Morrissey and Moose versus Matt Cardona and Eddie Edwards. Uh, so Moose distracted Cardona from the apron, allowing Morrissey to capitalize with a sidewalk slam. Cardona countered with a power bomb and oh, excuse me, a power bomb attempt, and he makes the makes the tag to Eddie. Uh, Moose got involved once again. Morrissey sent him flying through the rope through the top rope to the floor. Morrissey and Moose hit a double Irish whip to Eddie as they cut off the ring and begin to wear him down. Eddie's about to make the tag when Moose pulls Cardona off the apron. Eddie finally fights off Moose, allowing him to tag an enraged Matt Cardona. Moose gets caught with a reboot, but Morrissey breaks the pin. It's a stalemate after a flurry of kicks takes out everyone. Eddie dives through the ropes, colliding with Morrissey on the outside. In the ring, Cardona rolls up Moose to score the pinfall victory. So, now, uh, what I don't know if you guys have seen it, but they also, after they went off the air, they showed Scott Demore come out and basically tell Moose that he's going to now be adding, uh, he's going to be making a triple threat match for the main event of Hard to Kill. Um, it's going to be Morrissey and Cardona challenging Moose for the world title. So solid episode of Impact here. Um, we got a main event for Hard to Kill. Uh, how do how do you feel about this, BQ? How do you feel about the episode at at, at whole, uh, as a whole, and how do you feel about this as a, a main event for Hard to Kill? You know, as I said, the show itself, kind of on paper, wasn't that good. You know, the, like they booked matches on the show. You know, like it's they're like, hey, we need a main event tonight. We need a, you know what? Hey, you're you Rando standing in the hall. You're wrestling Jonah next. Yeah. you know like he didn't have it, what a coincidence because he didn't have an opponent before you walked up um mm -hmm. but yeah you know on paper it's like eh, it was okay but it but it was a good i just it was a good episode it was very easy to watch very fun you know you know impact's gonna get a triple threat in there they just they right. have to they have to do it they can't not can't not do it uh but of course they weren't gonna do moose versus morrissey one-on-one -on -one, heel versus heel i mean but uh, but the thing is, you look at this match graphic, and you're, uh, you know, uh, casual wrestling fan or someone who just watches WWE, and you're like, you know, there's TNA putting uh, two WWE mid carters in a main event. You know, that's kind of kind of what it looks like. But 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 it's fresh. It's three guys that we don't typically see in the main event. I mean, Moose, yes, but you know, he's the champion, so it's a little different. Um, so it's fresh, it's different. It's not, you know, the, the same couple dudes that they use. Like it's, it's just different. So I, I'm, I'm interested to see it. You know, uh -huh. I, I think it's cool. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, I, I gotta say the Matt Cardona's run as uh what was that GCW champion? I thought it was interesting. You know what I mean? It was interesting. It was worth, it was worth taking a look, taking a peek, taking a gander. And, um, yeah, I mean, I'm interested to see what Matt can do going forward. Um, uh, you know, I was completely anti Cardona, you know, early on in his run. So, um, it, it's just, it's hard to shake off years of the stink of being Zack Ryder. Um, listen, he made, I'm sure millions upon millions of dollars being Zack Ryder. So 
Um, I, I'm sure it's not stink to him, but to a fan, it's we're talking about a character who we just saw continuously lose, right? So to now try to convince me this person should be competing for the top championship, it's a tough sell, bro. It's a tough sell. Um, but I think he's starting to round that corner. He's been in, in Impact long enough. And he's had enough matches and serious moments. He really hasn't been doing, you know, any sort of comedy or anything like that. And so, I, you know, listen, I'm, I'm ready to see him, uh, you know, have have a have a shot at the title. Do I think he should be the Impact Champion? No, no, I don't. Um, do I think he should be beating Moose? No, no, I don't. I'm not a big fan of of beating your world champion even in a roll up. I say no. it like this: Look, you always gotta um, you always gotta have a gauge, right? And you should always just ask, would they have done that to John Cena? Would they have done that to Roman Reigns? Because you can justify, you can talk yourself into anything. You'd be like, oh, well, you know, they're trying to get the guy ready for the pay-per-view. You know, you got to make it believable. Blah, 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 blah. Is anybody rolling up Roman Reigns for a victory right now? Right, in a, in a non-title match, right. In a non-title match. Not yeah. freaking happening. Not happening. So... If you wouldn't do it to Roman Reigns, don't do it to this guy. Okay. I mean, I'm just saying if, if we're, if we're trying to book people to look strong, right. Then book people to look strong, right? Like don't, we're going to book you to look strong, but you know, like, no, you're going to book people to look strong, book them to look strong. Don't be fugazi about it. Don't be fugazi. Forget about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. Um, it was just they just needed a way to get Cardona into the main event. Yeah. So pin your champion. I, I'm I'm not. I've never in any company been a, been a fan of the champion losing. And I don't know that WWE does it now, but I mean, there was a period of time, man. Those last couple of years, I was watching it routinely. That I mean, if you were a re if you were a champion and the title wasn't on the line and you were wrestling, you were fucking losing. Right. <laughs> it, it was, yeah. I mean, it's just That's unbelievable. True. It's unbelievable to say, oh, oh, the title on the line is the only time you seem to be unbeatable. Like they had Britt Baker lose the other day. Wow. Yeah. You know, no, to that, Rio. Kind of, yeah. I mean, and so to me, again, like in real sports, right? In real sports, people go on hot streaks. It makes sense, right? Like in the NFL, right? Look at Patrick Mahomes. There's like two years where he was untouchable. And this year he looks very average. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it can happen to anybody, right? Like Tom Brady has ups and downs. Like now he's a great, he's an all-time great. So he has way more ups than downs, but everybody's going to have some downtimes, right? So, um, but like, but what you don't see is you don't see Tom Brady have like uh, uh, a game in the middle of the season where he throws, you know, 10 interceptions. You know what I mean? Like that, that's the equivalent to having like your champion just get, you know, rolled up on TV. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? So I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a huge fan of it. I'm not a huge fan of it. Um, as it stands right now, do you think you're going to be watching Hard to Kill? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Is there anything in particular you're looking forward to on that show? I mean, I don't know how you can't be excited about the uh, Ultimate X match. You know, I, I'm that that's worth probably worth watching it in a, in itself. Uh, I, I don't know what they're going to, I don't have as much interest in a Mickey and um, Deanna match. I didn't love that match at Balfour glory. Like most people did. I thought the finish was super flat. Uh, Mickey J James's DDT is like the shittiest DDT in wrestling. Oh, wash out your mouth. Oh, yo, dude, that is the fakest. I, I, dude. I like Mickey James. I used to like when she would, do the dude she had a finisher in wwe called like the long kiss good night that she used to use in the beginning when did she, she used to actually psychic. kiss women when she did that yeah 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 because <laughs> she was like kind of psycho like yeah. that shit was badass dude and even the kick I'm, I'm even okay with her doing the the kick man but that ddt is just the fakest i remember when she beat uh Angelina Love, I think it was for the time. <laughs> and it's funny, they played this as an impact flashback uh, a couple months ago. I couldn't believe they played it. She hit the worst DDT. People, I'm sure people know what I'm talking about, dude. Like this thing 
looked so bad. It barely connected. It was the flattest finish of all time. Uh, I can't believe they, they actually replayed that, but dude, that, that move just stinks, man. Uh, <laughs> but I love Mickey James. Otherwise I really do. Um, but I'm not looking forward to that as much. You know, I, I would imagine Deanna's probably going to get the belt back. I had said uh, on this podcast a couple of months ago, I said, Kiara Hogan is doing something in, in NWA because I was at the tapings. I was like, she's doing something in NWA right now bigger than she ever did in Impact. And now people see at the pay-per-view, she's getting a one-on-one match with Mickey James for the Knockouts Championship. Like, she never had any Knockouts Championships programs with Impact. She sure certainly wasn't having one-on-one matches with, you know, someone of Mickey James's caliber. So, you know, good for her. Uh, and AWA or AEW allows her to work NWA, so she seems to be pretty happy doing that because she's not thrilled about her AEW time at the moment. Right. Um, but I, I don't know what else they're going to do. Um, I would imagine a Good Brothers at this point like they, if they wrestle Finn Juice or the Bullet Club, I won't. I, I tell you right now, I won't watch it as a protest. <laughs> well, I, but uh, I, they're gonna take on Swan and Mac. Yeah, I mean, like, why aren't Rich Swan and Willie Mac wrestling for the titles, man? Like, I don't, I don't get that. I, I, I know I've said this before, but um, I, I really think they missed the boat by not keeping Rich Swan as a top guy after that title run, because mm-hmm. that was a great title run. And I think that you really, you know, just I, I just really think you just, just you lost an opportunity to have a top guy, like a guy who's an attraction. You know what I mean? Coming off that long title run, somebody who is guaranteed to give you great matches. You know what I mean? And you so you just keep putting him in, in feature spots, man. Like it's it's not rocket science. It's not rocket science. He should be winning. You know what I mean? Again, like treat him, give him the Cena treatment. Like you had the great championship run and now you're at the top of the card. Congratulations. You're only going to lose when it's super important. That should be the way. Why not? Because, you know, I'm not going to go on a whole Rich Swan rant here, but Rich Swan is a guy who if Impact were to start treating him like he's special, he's got the receipts. If Impact, if, if Rich Swan walked off of Impact tomorrow, and then walked on to WWE or AEW, they would be playing Rich Swan's hits nonstop. So now that he's here, play the freaking hits. Remind <laughs> people that he's dope so that when he comes out, people care. Because you know he's going to deliver each and every time he's on the show. You know he's going to deliver every time he's on the show. So get people excited for the fact that he's here. And like, it, 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 does this make any sense? Yeah, dude, that, and that's why I was saying this is the time to put a belt on him because you cooled him off after the Kenny Omega program instead of rehabilitating. Again, I'm doing sound like Jim Cornette. Like, he loses his title. He loses that big match. The next feud, he has to win. You have to re- start rehabilitating him from that loss. But instead, they made him lose again. And then he's just doing what he, he's doing. Like, he lost the good brother. Like, it's like, yo, man, put the damn title. Ty- tag belts on these dudes uh willie mac needs something needs this uh, something like this at this point he's been with the company forever he had the little x division title run in front of no fans like they both need these belts like get the damn belts off the good brothers or or right i think the belts need them right like i don't think they need the belts i think the belts need them because like you know like again championship supposed to be a plot device right but you got to put the plot device on people that the fans will care about. Then they matter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like you put the titles on people who the fans care about. Then people will care about the person who takes it from them. Mm-hmm. People don't care about the good brothers. Like, let's, so again, let's put this out to, to the room, to the impact lounge, the impact faithful. Okay. Tell us. <laughs> Tell us, how do you guys feel about the Good Brothers? Are you guys excited about the Good Brothers? Do you guys, uh, is you know, do you guys get excited when the Good Brothers come on your TV? You know what I mean? Are, are you stopping what you're doing to, to catch the next Good Brothers match? This is no shade. I honestly want to know from the people listening to the show, you're obviously fans of Impact Wrestling. 
Um, so like, how do you feel about the good brothers? Are are these guys, you know, you guys see these people as like feature players as like, uh, is, is, are, are they one of the reasons you watch the show? Are they something who you're, ch- are they someone who you're checking for? You know, you want to know what they're doing above all, like what, how do you guys view the good brothers? Go ahead and drop it in the comments and let us know what you guys think about the good brothers. Hell yeah. <laughs> Definitely let us know that shit. Um, speaking of the comments, so we're not going to go through the comment section again. I really liked the mailbag episode we did, uh, last week. Um, you know, BQ, we were talking about this before we came on and and recorded. And, um, I think we'll, we'll kind of make that a thing is, you know, maybe, maybe once a month or, you know, once every couple of weeks, we'll do a mailbag episode. So keep dropping your comments, uh, in, in, in the comments below the YouTube, uh, and below, ugh, below this video and leave your name and where you're from and we're, we're happy to give you shout outs and if you you know if you got dope questions or comments we want to hear it we will react to it um but it, you know it feels like a good place to do that for now is in the mailbag episodes so every couple of weeks you know we'll collect the best questions and we'll have an episode where we just you know where we where we have a, a quick little back and forth with you guys um you can uh, another thing you guys can let us know drop in the comments let us know what did you think of the mailbag episode did you like that is that a, is that a cool format you guys like especially you know when the actual impact content is not really worth you know having a whole show about you know what i mean let us guys let, let, let's know what you guys think about that hells yeah um all right b i i i i think that's about all we got you got anything else you want to say for the people no, man. Thanks. Uh, thanks for checking us out as always. And um, that's all I've got to say. All right. Tell the people where they can find you on uh, out, out here in these Twitter streets in these uh, <laughs> in these Internet streets. You know, BQ speaks on Twitter. I was just followed by uh, Chris Bay today. So I thought that was pretty cool. You were followed by Chris Bay. What? Yeah, that's a wow. That's a big get, man. Chris Bay is that dude right now. I, I can't believe you got followed by Chris Bay. Yeah, That's so what, uh, I mean, listen, if, if anybody's out here ke- uh, putting on for Chris Bay, uh, it's your boy, but it's okay. I guess <laughs> I got to, I got, I got to get my profile up, you know, before I get noticed by the Chris Bays of the world. Yeah. <laughs> maybe one day, maybe if one day they'll like- recognize little old me, but you know what? <laughs> I don't do this for love and attention. I do this because I know that I can give you guys some good content. So I'm here. I'm a giver. I'm a giver. Yeah, man. Uh, if you want to be like Chris Bay, follow me as well. <laughs> yeah, there you go. And mm-hmm. and did you tell them exactly where they can follow you? What's your Twitter address? Yeah, BQ Speaks, baby. Yeah. All right. Cool. Uh, you can follow me at TW Talking About on Twitter, on Instagram, on your social media of choice. Uh, you can also follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod. That's T A L K I N B O U T. P-O-D. Follow my podcast page. And when you get there, click the, the link in the bio to my YouTube page. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube page. I'm going to start dropping uh, some fire content over there. You know what I mean? Get it going with a little wrestling, a little wrestling talk, maybe a little entertainment talk, maybe a little sports talk. We'll see what we do over there. But whatever it is, I promise you it's going to be fun. All right. So um thank you guys so much once again if you haven't done so yet please like comment subscribe um send this to somebody who you know who's a wrestling fan let's bring more people into the conversation tell a friend to tell a friend for bq i'm tw peace